The problem with some people's marriages is that you married Israel. But you got to live with Jacob. Oh, Y'all don't want to talk to me. Let, let me leave that alone. And until you can deal with Jacob, you can't enjoy Israel because both of them show up from time to time without warning because they're both laying in the same bed. This is the Potter's Touch. Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord. This is a teaching that I believe is absolutely invaluable. As people are downsizing, as people are relocating, as they're moving in and out of relationships and marriages and empty nest syndromes, the one thing that is sure about life, as soon as you get it all pinned down, it will always change. If you have the liquidity of thought and the nimbleness of mind, the flexibility to be able to reposition yourself, you can always keep moving forward. It is the inflexible that become overwhelmed. Reposition yourself is a teaching that helps you to be flexible enough to move with the flow, the ebbings and the tides of life. Take a look. To many of you, what I hope you are starting to understand is that if you will allow God to do some shifting in this season in your life, it will not take you long to come into alignment for what God is going to do in your life. But God is going to do a quick work in your life in spite of the original injury that started this problem in the first place, God is gonna snap some things into place in your life that's going to reposition you and bring you into alignment and the best. is yet to come. Who would have ever thought that something as simple as a tennis shoe would end up causing so much pain. Who, who would have ever thought that something as simple as an, uh, an, an absent father would have caused so many years of excruciating pain in non-related areas. Who would have ever thought that not being the preferred sister or the preferred brother, that now that you're an adult, 40 years old, that you would still be wincing as a man from something that happened when you were a kid? Who would have ever thought that the rejection of a first boyfriend or a, a date rape when you were a girl would, would be affecting you on your second marriage. The Bible said that it is the little foxes that destroy the vine. It's not always big stuff. It's little stuff. See, you have to understand, when I looked around and my back went out, I couldn't get out of the bed. To turn in my sleep woke me up in the middle of the night. The pain was so bad, it was hard not to scream out in the middle of the night. I'm not talking about a little bit of pain. I am not a wimp of a person. I can deal with some stuff. But there I am at three o'clock in the morning biting my lip to keep from screaming out in pain because I turned in my sleep and the pain woke me up. Five months after a little incident, the incident is over, but the after effects. The effects of not being prepared for what I was getting ready to do, the effects of not stretching properly, the effects of not being geared up for what I was about to do, the effects of stepping into a situation for which I was not prepared left me with months of pain because the preparation did not match up with the process. Now, you know that I didn't bring you out here this morning to talk about running. Except, you're running a race called life. 
And many of you didn't start out with the right equipment. You didn't have the support for the race. And when you don't have the support for something, it will really throw you out of a line. And being thrown out of a line affects how you deal with everything the rest of your life. In the second half of your life, number one, you have to separate what was purpose from fodder. What really, you were really meant to do from all of the things that people put in your life that you really weren't meant to do in the first place so that you can focus to make the second half of your life the most effective. That means at some point in your life you have to say, you know what, that wasn't for me anyway. And I was never meant to do that anyway. And, and this was something that my mother put on me and this was something that my father wanted and this is something that my friends wanted and this is something I tried to do to keep up with my brothers and sisters but, but this right here, I was born to do that. I was created to do that. And so on the second half, I'm going to focus and reposition my efforts from all of the distractions that divided my focus so that I can have complete alignment and be prepared to make the second half the best half. <laughs> I, I, I tried to beat it, but there, there are some things only age can teach you. Read all the books, get hands laid on you, anoint yourself with oil, talk in tongues, pray in the Holy Ghost, don't eat chicken, don't eat rabbits, walk backwards, stand on one foot, bounce around on your head, but inevitably there are certain things that only time can teach you. Jacob is now an old man. He's learned some stuff. He's done some crazy things. He's made some mistakes. He's been wild, he's been frivolous, he's been irresponsible, he's been crazy, he's been untrustworthy, he's been unpredictable, and he survived it. He's gone through a transformation to find out who he was. From Jacob to Israel, he has in the process of wrestling with God, found out who he was, and then spent the second half of his life trying to make what he found out materialize in his life. And even as he gets ready to die, there is still some, some flipping in the text between Jacob and Israel. All the way down to the end, there are certain struggles that remain present in your life. He, as Jacob, he hears that Joseph is coming and he's getting ready to die. Jacob is about to die. But when he heard that Joseph was coming, Israel sat up in the bed and strengthened himself. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. For the benefit of you that might not know your scripture, Jacob refers to his old man, who he is, his base nature, his carnality. Israel refers to his divine self, his spiritual self, his holy self, his purposeful self. And all the way down to the grave, we are seeing both people showing up in his life. One moment he's acting like Jacob, the next moment he's acting like Israel. One moment Jacob is in tears, the next moment Israel is standing by faith. One moment Jacob is getting ready to die, the next moment Israel sat up in the bed and strengthen. Have you ever had your divine self sit up in the bed and strengthen your dying self and say, wait a minute, God didn't bring you this far to leave you. Have you ever been ready to give up and then somebody preached a word that made Israel sit up in the bed? Woo. Mm. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, God, to all of my single sons and daughters, whenever you meet somebody, a prospective candidate to marry them, understand that you are dating at least two people. <laughs> at least, I mean saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized and got it going on and on my way to heaven is still at least two jokers in here at any given day. And you have to figure out which one are you talking to today. 
Sometimes you're going to get Jacob and other times you're going to get Israel. And <laughs> oh God, the problem with some people's marriages is that you married Israel. but you got to live with Jacob. Oh, Y'all don't want to talk to me. Let, let me leave that alone. And until you can deal with Jacob, you can't enjoy Israel because both of them show up from time to time without warning because they're both laying in the same bed. could almost wake up in the morning and say, which one are you today? <laughs> All the way down to the end of his life, we're still seeing Jacob and Israel struggling for control. This means that if you are waiting for the complete annihilation of Jacob to start your life, your life will be over and Jacob will still have some presence. Y'all don't want to talk to me. <laughs> mm. He's old now. Israel sat up in the bed, strengthened himself, and waited for Joseph to come. Death could have took Jacob, but not Israel. <laughs> sat up in the bed, he strengthened himself. And Israel always talks about where he was when it happened. He said, and God blessed me and touched my life. And all of these years I have survived. Many times it was Israel that pulled Jacob. Do y'all do you all understand what I'm saying? He says, now I'm getting ready to die. And he says, I want, to bring, I want you to bring your sons to me that I may bless them. He doesn't have to bless Joseph. He's already blessed Joseph. Now he wants to bless Joseph's seed. These boys, mother was a heathen an idolater, an Egyptian that Jacob had met while he was in Egypt. They are Hebrew on their father's side, Egyptian on their mother's side. They are monotheistic on their father's side and they are pluritheistic on their mother's side. And as they walk into the room, they have been affected by both. Nobody could have blessed them like Jacob because Jacob already knew what it was like to have two opposing personalities. See, let me tell you something. It takes certain people to mentor certain people. I listen to all the pastors on TV who talk about, I don't mean to be crude, but they say that they were raised in church and they come from five generations of spiritual leadership and, and they were raised in Sunday school and they were virgins when they got married and 
They, these lips have never tasted a cigarette nor a drink of liquor or ever smoked a joint in my life. All of my life, I've been a committed Christian to Jesus Christ. You can't help me. <laughs> Nothing against you. I admire you. I respect you. I honor you. I revere you. You can't help me. I need somebody who has some issues because I came with some mess in my life and I need somebody who can lay hands on me that says, been there, done that, got a t-shirt. <laughs> if you're going to bless me, you have to have done some mess yourself because you can't relate to all the stuff I got to climb over to get into the presence of God if you didn't have to climb over some stuff yourself. Still to come on The Potter's Touch. I don't know who I'm teaching. I don't know who I'm teaching this morning. I don't know who I'm teaching this morning, but I feel God working like a chiropractor. He just snapped something back into place down in your spirit and in your life. And the thing that used to hurt, it's not hurting anymore because God said, I'm going to do a new thing. I am so excited that my dear friends, Bishop T.D. Jakes and Oprah Winfrey will be together at Megafest. August 29th. Y'all don't want to miss this. The biggest family-friendly festival is back, featuring Oprah's Life Class, August 29th at 9 a.m. Full of faith and inspiration, top Billboard artists will be in Dallas. Entertainment, Just Church and Comedy Show, Ball Up Championship Game, and more. Register at mega-fest.com or call 1-800-BISHOP-2 today. Slap your neighbor and say, reposition yourself. Come out of your depression, your despair, your loneliness, your fog, your self-indulgences, your hatred, your malice, whatever is holding you back from living the abundant life that God has called you to live, reposition yourself. Fix your credit, fix your mind, fix your emotions, fix your heart, get over your past, go on with your life. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Cut it loose, get it snapped, get it pushed, get it in alignment because you got to walk into the blessings of God and get what God has for you. Reposition yourself. Ah. Watch this. Verse 8. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, they are my sons whom God has given me in this place, in this place I'm in, in this Egypt, Egyptian place. And he said, bring them, I pray thee unto me, and I, and I will bless him. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age so that he could not see, and he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, and this is good too, and Israel said unto Joseph, I have not thought to see thy face. He said, I didn't even think that I'd get to see you again. And lo, God has showed me also thy seed. I want to stop here and talk to all of you who have been feeling like you're going to die in the state you're in. In the back of your mind, you thought this is how it is. It's not going to get any better. Maybe it's not meant for me. This is all she wrote. I came to tell you the devil is a lie. Jacob said, I didn't even expect to see you, Joseph. I thought I would never see you again. But look what the Lord has done. Not only did I get to see my son, but now I'm getting to see my grandson. I want to rebuke the spirit of death that has been lurking over you and your mind and your emotions and telling you that you're gonna die in the state you're in. I want you, if I'm talking to you this morning, to just get up and shake it off. God is gonna do something fresh 
and something powerful and something life-changing in your life, you haven't seen the half of what God is about to do. Squeeze your neighbor's hand and just say, unexpected blessings. I mean unexpected, unrealized, mind-boggling, life-changing, thirst-quenching, mind-renewing blessings are coming in your life. I gotta take a minute, I gotta take a minute, cause I just felt death just walk out the room. Woo. It's been hanging over you like a cloud, saying you're not gonna see this, and you're not gonna get that, and you're never gonna get out of this house, and you're never gonna get up on your feet, and you're never gonna be loved, and you're never, the devil is a lie. God said unexpected, pressed down, shaken together, running over, supernatural miracles are going to happen in your life. Look at your neighbor and say, reposition yourself. You're gonna get more than you expected. More than you ever hoped for. More than your situation dictates. More than your background lended itself to. I mean pressed down, shaken together, running over blessings. I got to go in verse 12. I know you got to praise him because that just leaped up off of somebody. I, I, I know you got to, you don't understand what it is to have something hanging on you, pressing you down, trying to get you to accept defeat, trying to get you to just give in and say, this is all you get. You're just not supposed to get up you're not going to have no life. You're just going to die in this situation. And this Sunday morning, I felt it lift up off of you. Oh! Uh-oh. 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 Oh! 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 I don't know who I'm teaching. I don't know who I'm teaching this morning. I don't know who I'm teaching this morning, but I feel God working like a chiropractor. He just snapped something back into place down in your spirit and in your life. And the thing that used to hurt, is not hurting anymore because God said, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm telling you, that doctor put me on the table and just made a certain maneuver and something just snapped back into place. Touch your neighbor and say, something just snapped back into place. Got my fight back, got my drive back, got my passion back, 
got my fire back. Something just snapped back into place. Been through hell, been through high water, been through pain, been through trouble, cried myself to sleep, but I just felt something snap. Hey, we got to stop right there, but we'll be right back right after this. Learn to reposition your life with Bishop Jake's latest message. If you will allow God to do some shifting in this season in your life, it will not take you long to come into alignment for what God is going to do in your life. But God is going to do a quick work in your life in spite of the original injury that started this problem in the first place. God is going to snap some things into place in your life that's going to reposition you and bring you into alignment and the best. Order your copy of this dynamic message on CD or DVD. When you write us, visit our website or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. Be lifted up from tragedy to testimony. It's not in the place, baby. It's on the way. We're praying about the destination, but God is planning for the journey. Be lifted up by the power of expectation. Where you get in a mundane rut of low expectations. Ordinariness is the enemy of miracles. Be lifted up by calling on the name of Jesus. You don't need any more money. You need a miracle. God's getting ready to lift your entire situation. For helping us reach others with your gift of $75 or more, you will receive Lift Me Up on CD, along with a coaster set with words of encouragement. Just write us, visit our website, or call 1-800-BISHOP-2. I'm tired of crying in this house. I'm going to speak to my debt and my fear and my loneliness. And when your gift is $150 or more, we will include Bishop Jake's book, God Longs to Heal You, helping you free your mind, body, and spirit. Be lifted up today. We've got to stop there, but I pray for those of you who are facing the daunting task of needing to reposition yourself, whether it is geographically, spiritually, domestically, relationally, uh, academically, it doesn't matter. Change is always difficult. The tools that well, I share in my material and in my book go into deep detail to encourage you and to, in fact, empower you with the possibility of simply changing. Reposition yourself. When you can't change anything else, the people, their attitude, the circumstance, you change yourself. And my, 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 what a relief it is. God bless you. Have a good one.